Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out at the range to kind of do a first shots video. I have a brand new Generation 2 Remington R51. Now that here's the brand new Generation 2 handgun. But over here to my right, I have the original Generation 1 gun. I kept this gun because I wanted to see what changes, if any, Remington made to the second generation gun after all the problems that the first generation gun had. This first generation gun was so bad that Remington had to cancel all production and recall all the handguns, and it took them two years to bring the Generation 2 back to market. Now, I wasn't sure if Remington was really going to revitalize this brand or not because of how poorly that initial launch went off. Now, initially, some of the magazines were saying, oh, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread, but the social media guys were saying, no, there's some serious problems with this gun, and I was one of those guys. And so I think it's one of those instances where we saw social media being brutally honest and a lot of the print magazines kind of toeing the line because of advertising. Well, it turned out that the gun was a complete travesty. I had three of these. All three of them had very serious problems. I deemed the original version really to be unsafe in many cases. And so I kept one so that when version two released, I could see what, if anything, they had changed in the gun. So that's what this video is. Now, I've not fired this new gun yet. I will say uh, right out of the box, I've noticed some weird behavior with the gun, much like with the original one that I had where I could push the rear side out with my thumb. Uh, this gun, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure it's, it's empty. Empty magazine, empty chamber. But when you pull the trigger and the gun cycles, when you release the trigger, I have a dead trigger. Now, eventually, there it goes, it'll catch and fire. Full release, dead trigger. There it fired on the second pull. Full release, dead trigger. Fired on the second pull. Now how this is gonna translate into actually shooting it, I don't know because you guys are to come, with, come along with me as I fire this gun for the first time. The, the original gun actually made me nervous. I, I was so scared during the production of that video, I stopped shooting it and said, guys, I don't feel safe shooting the gun anymore because I had it going off out of battery. I don't know how I feel about this gun. I mean, obviously it still has issues right out of the box, but I also know that this gun has been test fired at the factory because there was carbon inside the gun. This is not a T&E gun. I got it through Copper Custom. I ordered it through one of our distributors and I was waiting patiently until they showed up. So anyway, Let's see how this gun shoots right out of the box. Now, I brought out a couple of different brands of ammo. I do have some American Eagle, which is courtesy of Federal. I want to thank those guys for sending this stuff along. And then I have some hollow point ammo that I've used in previous videos from ZQI. Um, it's just a, a, a 9 millimeter hollow point, 115 grain hollow point. And if this stuff doesn't work, I think it may have some other ammo in the Jeep we may try. So let's go ahead and load up the Generation 2 gun and see how the first shots go. All right, guys, so here we go. The first seven rounds out of the new Generation 2 Remington R51, and I am using the American Eagle 115 grain ball ammo. This stuff has worked fine in other pistols. Go ahead and make sure I have the magazine firmly seated. Now keep in mind, this gun does have a grip safety, so you do need to uh, grip the, gri the pistol firmly. All right, let's see how she shoots. All right, so far, no problems. It fired just fine. I will say that the sights seem to be wildly off to the right, but that could just be me not being used to the gun. All right, the magazines are the same from the previous generation. I'm gonna go ahead and load another seven rounds into the gun. Notice we had no trigger reset issues, so that seemed to be something that uh, occurred when I was not actually firing the gun, but just manually cycling the gun. It may actually work those issues out. All right, no issues, two magazines. That is good news. All right, go ahead and use the slide stop. Yeah, this thing is like at 25 yards, three feet to the right, pretty consistently. 
I've tried to zero it later. All right, guys, four magazines of flawless function with the R51. All right, that's actually pretty good news. Let's load up some of the hollow point ammunition and see how it fares. Now the gun is marked as a plus P. Now I will also say that I've noticed that the action on this gun is quite a bit smoother. It sounds kind of clunky, but it's definitely smoother than the original version, which I have here. This one's much more gritty and harder to use. I'll show you the, some internal differences that I found between the guns here in a few moments, but let's load up some hollow point ammunition from ZQI and see how the gun fares with a little bit warmer stuff in hollow points. All right, guys, so we've loaded up the four magazines this time with the jacket of hollow point. This is 115 grain stuff. This is from ZQI, but it's actually made by IMI and it's just imported and repackaged and sold from ZQI. And I do want to thank those guys for sending the ammo over to me to use in this video. Here we go. All right, seven rounds. See how she does. So far, so good. I'm actually been pretty impressed. All right, it nose dived. You can see how the round is nose dived into the magazine. Now, interesting enough, I watched uh, VSO Gun Channel's review and the firearms blog, and I think both of those guys were having the same issue with the rounds nose diving. Now, what's interesting is we're talking about a defensive load here, guys. These are hollow points. The ball rounds seem to have worked their way around it. The hollow points are what's having an issue. So let's go, go ahead and see if we can get it to chamber the round by pulling back on the slide. All it's doing is just continuing to push that bullet back into the case. All right, so the gun's not gonna work. Let's go ahead and drop it out. You can see that's where it's getting hung up. Go ahead and try a different magazine. This is how the round should set the magazine with the nose up. Let's just see if it'll finish these out. Okay, so it did finish out that magazine. Let's try another mag of the ammo. That stuff's a little bit warmer. I can feel the recoil, but it's still quite manageable. The recoil impulse on the gun is actually kind of pleasant. And these rounds seem to be shooting a little bit more to point of aim as well. Or maybe it's just me getting used to the gun. All right, nose down. Now, here's one consistency I found with this, this type of malfunction, guys. It seems to be on a full magazine. You fire that first round, the next round that it tries to chamber, nose is down. All right, let's go ahead and lock the slide to the rear. We already know we won't be able to clear it by tapping it. Again, you can see how it's hitting the lip of the magazine with the hollow point. Let's go ahead, push it back, get that nose back up where it belongs, and see now if it can finish out the magazine. And it locked open. So there was that consistent malfunction. So let's look for it once again. More of the hollow point ammo. Got seven rounds, full magazine. That time it was on the, the second round fired, the third round feeding. So I'm going to have to say that it just doesn't like hollow points. I'll have to go back and look at the other guys' videos to see what type of ammunition they were using when they were having these malfunctions. But right now, uh, it seems that the gun only seems to work with ball ammo. It does not like hollow points. And this is fairly hot stuff, guys. I've never had any problems with this stuff in any of the guns I've ever ran. Uh, IMI is definitely a good ammunition manufacturer. And there again, we can see that it's just nosed into the tip of that magazine. A ball round probably just skips right past that. Let's see if we can get it to finish the magazine out. Okay, so it finished that magazine out. We have one left. 
Same ball, I'm sorry, same hollow point ammo. And it emptied that magazine with no issues. But I'm gonna go ahead and say three out of the four magazines had a problem with the hollow point ammo. Not good. So we have noticed that the followers on the magazines are slightly different. We'll show you what those differences are. Now, three of the four magazines failed with the hollow point, so I don't really think the, the magazine follower is making that big of a difference. But the two that we're about to shoot with the hollow points are the new magazines with the new followers. Externally, the dimensions of the magazines are identical and interchangeable. All right, so that was with one of the new magazines, and it nosed down. Now let me show you what the differences are. Let me go ahead and clear this malfunction, fire the rest of these rounds out, and I'll show you the differences between the two magazines. All right, so here are the two magazines we just used. These are the new magazines. And if you look at the followers, they have this raised section right here. Now let's go ahead and clear out some of the old original magazines. Look how that round is sitting in there, by the way. All right. These are the old original magazines. Let me fire these rounds out of it so I can show you the follower and how it's slightly different from the new magazines. All right, so have the old original magazine in my left hand and the new in my right, and you should be able to see slight differences there. All right, it looks like it's trying to maybe hold the nose of the bullet up a bit more, like Remington knew there was a feeding issue with the old style, but despite that fact, it's still having that nose down issue with hollow points. All right. But, aside from that, the gun seems to work just fine with ball ammo. Had no malfunctions with ball ammo. Let's run over and field strip these guns and show you what they look like on the inside. Let's field strip the new R51 and show you what the process is. I'm going to go ahead and drop the magazine out of it, make sure that the weapon's empty. Now, it's very similar to a 1911, and you have to pull this slide stop pin out. You'll notice that they're identical. This is the original one in my right hand, and for whatever reason, Remington has decided to keep that takedown pin recessed. It's not even flush, it's recessed. So I will say starting right off the bat, field stripping this gun is a nightmare. All right, so what you have to do since you can't push that pin through without a tool, once the weapon's clear, you're gonna have to pull it back to its takedown notch, which is right here. Pull it all the way back, try to hold it somehow, and pry this pin out because there is no way to push it from the other side unless you have three hands. This gun will make you invent new cuss words. Okay, so now once you have it taken apart, you'll notice these serrations here on the barrel. You have to keep the slide to the rear, grab it by the nose of its barrel, and pull it apart. Okay, now do not fire this gun. Don't pull the trigger while this hammer's back and the gun's disassembled because it will damage the frame. The frame is aluminum. We'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. But look inside, all right, here's our hesitation lock the bolt, if you will. Now all these parts look pretty much identical to the original gun. And now we have the barrel and spring. I'm gonna release this so it comes back. Getting the barrel out can be a little bit challenging. You wanna kind of push this assembly forward and bring it up to about that point. Then the barrel will slide out. You wanna make sure that nothing goes sailing because it is under spring pressure. And then once you do that, you can push this forward and bring that lot, that collar out and the recoil spring. All right, that takes a lot of practice. Let's go ahead and clean the parts up here really quick. Just wipe them off. But 
This is identical to the original field stripping. All right, we're gonna field strip the other gun and show you the differences that I can see between the two. All right, now I'm gonna field strip the original gun. Magazine's out of it. It's clear and safe. I'm gonna go ahead and let it go home. Pull it to the rear, to the takedown spot. Try to pull this out. Okay, again, hold it to the rear, pinch that barrel. This takes very strong hand, hands, guys. This gun is not meant for people with weak grips. All right, pull it apart. Take the locking block out of it. Let the barrel go back. Again, I'm gonna pull that little locking collar back. And try to get it to come up at a slight angle here, which will allow me to get the barrel out. It's not easy to do. All right, barrel out, and then you can take that little locking collar and spring. So if we take a look at the new generation two spring and the original, you can see that there's quite a bit, bit of difference in the springs. These are the recoil springs that operate the gun. The bolts are identical. Actually, they're not. There's a slight shelf here that isn't present on the other one that gives more support to the rim of the case. So here's the old one I'm tapping with my finger and here's the new one. And you can see there's a shelf there. So it's supporting the case more. Now, if you remember my first video, I had cases going off out of battery. All right, so they made some changes right there. I'm gonna separate those two. Uh, the barrels look pretty much the same. This is the old and this is the new. Don't really see a whole lot of differences there. All right. But if we look inside the trigger groups, this is the new one. This is the old one. You'll see that there are some differences in the trigger mechanisms. So the disconnector on this one is smaller. This one has the, the disconnector is a little bit longer. These are short, stubby, rounded ones. This is a little bit longer. I've also noticed that the ejector on this one is not pinned in the front. This one is, and it can't come out. It just sets solidly there. Now, you have to put the gun back together while it's inverted, so this thing flopping around just makes an already difficult process even more difficult in putting it together, because when you put it upside down, this naturally wants to fall up, so you have to push it down. We'll show the reassembly process here in a second. All right, so... That's about it. Now here's what else I find that's a little bit interesting about the design of the gun. It's called a hesitation lock. And basically, what's happening is when the gun is locked up, it's setting in this position. The barrel is right here. It's locking. This is a hardened steel bolt, and it's setting locked on an aluminum shelf right here. You can see how the two are married. So once the recoil starts to act upon the slide, the slide starts moving rearward, it draws the rear of this lock out of its recess and then drags it rearward, pushing down the disconnector, coming back, ejecting the spent case, going forward, and then locking up again on that shelf. My concern is that over time you have a hardened steel bolt locking against an aluminum shelf. Now this is the new gun. Let's take a look at the old gun, my original one from my first video. You can see the wear. I can feel a very rough edge of where this was locking against that, that face. And after just a couple hundred rounds, it has already started to deform that face and push that shelf back. Now on one of the guns, I actually had it go off out of battery. And the distance that this, if this shelf starts to push back too far, my concern is, is that uh, it becomes unsafe, but I, I hope that it, Remington's tested that. I just have concerns about a steel bolt locking against aluminum shelf. If you're an engineer out there, feel free to comment down below. All right, let's go ahead and put the guns back together. I'm going to do just one. You start off putting your recoil spring in and this little locking collar, push it down, and tilt, set it in there so it tilts up like this because this is how you're going to get the barrel back in. Put the barrel in, and now push everything forward so it kind of lays flush, like that. And then over here, you'll notice the spring doesn't want to line up with the shelf. 
it takes a little bit of work to kind of get that spring to let to work here so you can get the barrel to protrude through but you do have to push it through because you can't put it back together if you don't and I cannot get that thing to line up no matter what I've struggled with this a lot there we go okay I finally forced it through now you have to really have strong hands guys push that through dang it push that forward and grab a hold of those slide serrations <laughs> because you have to pull that massive spring forward long enough to take your block and drop it in here like that okay now you also have to keep it pulled forward and that spring is a lot tighter than the original you have to keep it pulled forward and this locking piece from rotating you have to keep it pretty much horizontal while you try to slide the whole mechanism back together and notice that that ejector has already dropped down. So I'm going to try to push this back onto its slide, or onto the frame. Now I have to back it off a bit, push that ejector down, and then try to get it to line up. You kind of have to turn the barrel a little bit to get it to, to line up sometimes. Like I said, this thing will make you invent new cuss words. I, uh. All right, I'm losing my grip on the barrel already. Holy cow. All right, let's see if I can hold it together long enough to actually get it to go together this time. There we go. Got it, I think. No. Oh, you thing. There we go, all right, got it. Now, don't let it go forward. Kind of hold it to the rear, pull it back to the takedown spot right there. Kind of hold it. Now here's the other thing. There's a little teeny tiny spring that if you get this in here incorrectly, the gun will malfunction. This is entirely too easy to do. All right, so if you get the little toe of this hook on top of the spring instead of underneath it it'll push up and cause the gun to lock open every single time let's see if and it's easy to accidentally do because you're struggling with the gun much like i am now trying to keep everything aligned so you can put it back together and I got it together wrong. See guys, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So now this is what happens. When you accidentally get the spring where the toe of the slide stop is on top of it and not underneath it, you kind of have to push it in and pull down. Um, what happens is, and there's no magazine in the gun, every time the gun fires, it's going to lock open. As a matter of fact, let's load up a magazine and show you what happens when this occurs. All right guys, first of all, sorry about the beeping in the background. They're doing some construction up there. So anyway, now I'm going to fire the gun. I just got done reassembling it and I accidentally assembled it wrong, which I, as I said earlier is quite easy to do when you're struggling with the thing, trying to get it back together. And now what I'm going to show you is, first of all, there's no magazine in the gun. Okay, I have a loaded magazine in my left hand. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm not going to touch the slide stop. I'm just going to pull it to the rear. It's going to lock itself open. I'm going to insert a full magazine into the gun. And why don't you come around on the other side so they can see that I'm not touching the slide stop. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and chamber around. I'm going to keep my thumb well away from it. I'm going to fire one round, and the gun locks open. So every shot, it's going to do this because it's all too easy to put the gun together incorrectly. Anyway, you guys get the idea. So let's go back over to the table, try to put it together right. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the slide stop out of the gun and try to correct the problem of having accidentally installed the slide stop incorrectly. You have to bring it to its takedown position. You'll need fingernails, all right? I got the pin out. Now there's that little spring that we're talking about. What you're trying to do is get under 
that spring with the hook right here on the bottom of the slide stop. So let's see if I can do it, it correctly. Now this is a difficult process because you're holding against that really big recoil spring, trying to hold it back in this disassembly, reassembly position, and you have to push this in, and just as that lip starts to go under the slide, you have to pull it down and push it under. Okay, I got it back together correctly that time. So you have to deliberately make sure that you're doing everything just right. You push that pin in, hold the slide to the rear, put it down to just before it seats, pull down on the slide stop and make sure that it engages that spring properly and it's difficult to see what's going on inside of there because of where your hands are located and the location of the slide stop. Um, about half the time I put the thing together, if I'm in a hurry and not making a conscious decision, I will put it together incorrectly and it'll lock open. But if you're carrying this gun, uh, first of all, make sure it works with hollow point ammo and for your particular gun, because they may all vary, and make sure that you function check the gun after you put it back together because you don't want your gun locking open after every shot you fire. And again, it's all too easy to make that mistake when reassembling the gun. All right, guys, so we're gonna tie up the video this afternoon. Uh, the first shots video with the gun. A lot of the stuff about the gun is pretty much the same. We've noticed some minor differences internally, spring sizes, different parts, a pin here and there that's slightly different. Even the followers on the magazine seem to be slightly changed, but overall the gun still has the same basic function. It has ambi mag releases on both sides has a, uh, a right hand only slide stop. It doesn't have an ambi side stop. Um, it does have a nice little contoured sight here for pocket carry if you're gonna pull it out. You know, your clothing isn't gonna snag on it. it has three dot sights. Um, pretty decent slide serrations. You can get a good grip on it. it. Has a grip safety, which I really don't agree with, but it seems to work okay as long as you get a good tight grip on the gun. I remember when Remington was originally uh, talking this gun up at SHOT Show a couple of years ago, they said it was really, really easy for people with uh, lacking in hand strength, and they actually said women, that you can easily cock the pistol, and this is the demonstration they kept doing over and over again on the show floor. The only problem is, is if that same person with weak hand strength has to clean their own gun, good frickin' luck. Uh, even us out here, I had Sam playing around with it, and it was making him invent some cuss words. This is not an easy gun to field strip or to work with, but it is an, an easy gun to shoot. The guns are less than $400. Uh, they are currently shipping and available. I will continue to shoot this one. Uh, would I recommend it for carry? Absolutely not, at least not this particular one, because it does not reliably uh, cycle or fire hollow points. It doesn't seem to have a problem with ball rounds if you wanna carry a sub $400 handgun and only shoot ball rounds out of it. Uh, at least in the case of this particular gun, it might be a, a, a decent option for you. But for a carry gun, I would, uh, I, I simply don't trust the gun. All right, guys, gonna do a little bit more shooting, finish off these four magazines out of the pistol, and uh, I'll give you some updates later down the road after we put a lot more ammunition through the new Gen 2 R51. Ah, nose dived on a ball round. Oops. All right, guys, stick around. We'll talk to you soon.